Okay, so welcome back. A great question was asked yesterday by somebody in the comments and they said, what is it like to be a teacher? Do you earn enough? How do you compare salaries of teachers in Thailand to those in other countries? And why do so many foreigners come here to teach? Well, today I'm going to talk to you about salaries and cost of living and some comparisons to salaries of teachers in other countries. Okay, so let's begin by understanding what type of schools are there. There are government schools, then there are teachers who teach at language institutions, and there are university teachers. So the pay differs from each place, right? So let me begin by saying that um, the bare minimum that you could earn here is about 20,000 baht. Now 20,000 baht is not a good salary, but it is just about enough to get you going. It's just enough to survive. However, that's for a beginner and it varies. It's not the most common salary and it's not my salary. So I'm just making a case study here. So if you're earning 20,000, let's look at what are the expenses that you'll have every month, starting with the rent, um, utilities, transport, food, and any other costs such as entertainment or miscellaneous things, lifestyle choices, and so on. So the rents, there are different types of places to rent. So the most common one amongst foreign teachers who just come here um, for the first time would be apartments. When I say apartments, don't confuse it with like a one bedroom, a kitchen and so on. No. In Thailand, it means one room with uh, a big bed, a refrigerator. And sometimes it's air conditioned, sometimes it's not. There may be a TV thrown in and it's probably not more than 30 square meters. That's the average size. And how much does it cost? If you're in Bangkok, the minimum you would pay is about 3,000 baht a month. If you're outside, like in smaller towns or in uh, villages, it's going to be much less, maybe 2,5, 2,000, depends. So uh, the big deal here is you will pay 3,000 and then you will also pay utility bills, which could sometimes be as much as your rent because they charge a premium over the electric uh, bill like per unit it's normally not more than five baht but in some apartments they charge as much as 10 baht and that could jack up costs and you might end up spending as much as your rent so putting all together so let's say 3,000 plus another 1,500 on an average so that's 4,500 for rent alone talking about food now f since you don't have a kitchen and Unless you pay a, a bigger rent and then take a house, you probably wouldn't have a kitchen. You need to eat outside. You could like buy a kettle, maybe make some coffee and have some snacks at, at your place, but otherwise you'll be eating outside mostly. Most Thai people don't cook. They eat outside for a reason. And the reason is it's probably cheaper. So if you're a teacher, you'll probably spend about 150 to 200 do um, not dollars, sorry, Thai baht, <laughs> every day on food, like for breakfast, for lunch, and also for dinner. Now, if it's 50 baht approximately per meal, right, that'll get you a plate of rice, some meat on it, and a fried egg with a drink. In some places, it could be more than that, but on an average, you'd spend about 150 to 200 Okay, so transport comes next. If you're living close to the school and if you're smart enough to get an apartment there, then you would cut, cut, the, cut the transport costs. Transport costs are not significant. Um, if you're in the cities, there is public transport. But if you're not in the cities, there is no public transport in Thailand. You have to either rent a bike, uh, which could cost as much as like 3000 a month, or... You could buy your own scooter, 
you could buy your own car. It depends on your financial situation. But if you have your own transport, that's not expensive. If you don't and you take the public transport, you would probably spend max of about 100 baht a day. There are some bus routes that are absolutely free in Bangkok, so it depends. Um, having covered transport, let's put transport at about 3,000. Now, Thailand's a place where you, you would be tempted to go and spend in the markets. They have like everyday markets, every night, sometimes weekend markets, which sell really good stuff, including um, clothes, snacks, food, small decorations, touristy stuff, and so on. Like if you're living in Bangkok, you probably know about um, this place called Chatuchak Market. It's open in the weekends. And it's probably the biggest market in Thailand. I could be wrong, but um, it's always crowded. Lots of people go there to buy almost everything from electronics to food. Um, having said that, so, and also if you, if you subscribe to Netflix or you have the habit of occasionally watching a movie here and there, that's going to cost you, well, depending on your lifestyle, let's put a um, ballpoint figure at, at about 5,000 baht. All right. So all put together, if you're just making 20K, uh, it's pretty clear you're not going to be saving anything. Maybe you will be lucky to have like a thousand or two left in your pocket and you'll live paycheck to paycheck. Um, not a great life. And if you were already pretty well off in your home country, then why would you want to do this? Now, that's for the beginners. Now, there are the more common salary it would be more like 25 to 30,000 baht. Let me take a sip. Okay, sorry about that. So, um, so the most common salary would be around twenty-five to thirty thousand baht, but that's not the best. If you are a qualified teacher and you're a professional who's already taught in different schools in your home country, and then you come here and apply at a uh, international school, you might get as much as 182,000 Thai baht a month. Yeah, that's not an exaggeration. Just go to a job site called ajarn.com and you can see anywhere from 100,000 upwards of, as a teacher's salary in international schools. So the range is from like 20 to 182. It's a huge range, so it depends on your qualifications, your situation. Um, all those factors matter when you uh, when you look at your salary, right? Okay. So having discussed the salary and the cost of living here, I'm going to talk to you guys about language institutes, the government schools. Uh, where should you work and what are places you should avoid, how to get a contract, and so on. It's pretty easy to like get a job with a language school because it does not require... It, it's a private institution.